How's it going, Ayo? In this video, we're going to talk about Will Smith reacting to Jada's new interview, the fact that the Jonas Brothers might have pushed Joe Jonas to divorce Sophie Turner, and a massive Taylor Swift update. Be sure to like and subscribe if you love this video and want to see more like it. So Jada Pinkett Smith has been non-stop talking about her life recently, and she said some pretty shocking things about Will Smith and their marriage. Throughout all of this, he's been absolutely silent until now. He's quoted in a New York Times interview, he spoke about the all new interview that Jada did on Saturday while plugging her new book, and the New York Times said they got an email response from him. He apparently told them that Jada's memoir kind of woke him up. He said that he realized she is more resilient, clever, and compassionate than he'd understood. Will wrote, when you've been with someone for more than half your life, a sort of emotional blindness sets in, and you can all too easily lose your sensitivity to their hidden nuances and subtle beauties. But of course, not everyone would agree with that, because Jada's truth bombs these past few days have rubbed a lot of people the wrong way and a new conversation has formed about her and Will all over again, including the perception that she's been emasculating him publicly. But it sounds like Will doesn't mind what's been shared with the world, including the fact that they are no longer romantically involved. They live separate lives, but they refuse to get divorced. We also found out how she really feels about Chris Rock after everything that's happened. Years ago, when divorce rumors circulated about her and Will, Jada said that Chris asked her out on a date. She said, I think every summer, all the reports would come out that me and Will were getting a divorce. And this particular summer, Chris, he thought we were getting a divorce. So he called me and basically he was like, I'd love to take you out. Jada said that she was confused and asked him, what do you mean? And in response, he said, well, aren't you and Will getting a divorce? And she said, no, those are just rumors. Apparently Chris was appalled at this and felt bad that he had gotten the information wrong. So he profusely apologized and that was that. So how does that really fit into what happened at the Oscars? Well, if anything, it just adds an extra layer to all the chaos that came from it. Jada also revealed that she hadn't spoken to Chris Chris since the slap. When asked if she had any desire to talk to him, she said, I just hope that all the misunderstanding around us can be cleared up and that there can be peace. I think that there might be some misunderstanding between Chris and I as far as the 2016 Oscars. I think that he might have taken offense, which I meant no harm in offending. That wasn't my intention, but I do think that there is a big misunderstanding there. The drama between the three of them has been publicly brewing since 2016, when Will was snubbed by the Oscars for his performance in Concussion. That year, no actors of color were nominated in any of the acting categories, leading to the hashtag Oscars so white movement. Some artists boycotted the award show in protest, and Jada was vocally supportive of the protest on social media. She even asked Chris to step down from hosting that year's ceremony, which is something that he talked about in his Netflix comedy special. Instead of quitting though, he joked about Jada during the Oscars broadcast. He said, Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited. Seven years later, Jada said that she was not really recognizing the level of pressure that he might have been under at the time. Quote, I probably should have called him and gone, hey, are you okay? And just know that although I'm speaking out about the Oscars, I do wish you the best. And I just want you to know that me taking the time to have called him and said that just a touch base, but his feelings might have been hurt. She said that after the 2016 Oscars joke, he apologized and she apologized to him as well. So she actually thought that they were good and that the hatchet had been buried. So they did not talk for all those years until 2022. She had claimed that she also received an apology from Chris after the actual slap and in the end, she wasn't too upset about it considering that it put a spotlight on alopecia. She said, that's what comedians do. I would just have to say that I'm not really here to make any judgment on how people decide to express themselves and express their art. I'll say that several times I've had my feelings hurt for sure. I've had my feelings hurt a lot by Chris. More than seven months after its release, Jada also reacted to Chris Rock's comedy special, Selective Outrage. She says she was initially hurt after he mocked her on stage. Quote, I remember my heart piercing, my heart cracking, and and I remember my feelings being so hurt. And then I remember being able to smile and wish him well at the same time. During the recorded special, Chris made several jokes about the slap. Like the one where he says, people ask me if it hurt. Yes, that hurt. I got hit so hard, I heard summertime ringing in my ears. And there were also some more offensive jokes that were sprinkled in there. So it's not surprising that Jada was upset. Thankfully, it sounds like she has well and truly put that behind her and she's now able to move on from it all. Now, did you know that the Jonas Brothers might have pushed Joe Jonas to divorce Sophie Turner? 
Turner. While the divorce came as a shock to fans, we found out a whole lot more about it over the last few weeks. Sophie was there for the Jonas Brothers kickoff concert in New York City on August the 12th, where Joe dedicated a song to her and called her the person who's got his back no matter what. But only three weeks later, he ended it. Now, an inside source has come through with more information. They said Sophie had wanted Joe to wait until she was back in the States. She begged for another chance. According to the insider, Joe decided to rip off the band-aid instead after he got a push from his siblings, Nick and Kevin. Quote, everyone could see Joe was unhappy and distracted, so his brothers sat Joe down to talk about it in a mid-tour intervention. The two of them had been having marriage trouble for close to a year. Since welcoming their second child in 2022, they struggled with the demands of parenthood and their careers and balancing all of that with their personal goals. Apparently, they tried really, really hard to figure things out, hoping that they could eventually find their footing and resolve the issues. But it all became too much. Quote, the truth is, neither of them have been happy for some time, and they've been living separate lives for months. Since these reports came out, there have been more and more speculation about what really went wrong. There are claims that Sophie feels like she missed out on a lot in life. After all, she was only 20 years old when she started dating Joe, a bride at 23 and a mother of two by 26. There was also a vague TMZ reporter claiming that Joe saw or heard Sophie saying something on a ring security camera that made him realize their marriage was over. According to one insider, they just reached a point where it wasn't meshing anymore. It became painfully apparent that they were not very well suited for the long term. A lot of things brought them to this point, but there are also conflicting narratives flying around everywhere. On the one hand, it was said that Joe pulled the plug because he couldn't stand his wife's partying, which is ironic considering that in 2020, Sophie said that she's a homebody, and if she could stay home all day, she would. While Joe, on the other hand, says he's a real social butterfly out of the two of them. Sophie also hinted at being homesick, and it's very clear that she misses her life back in England. She said she misses the people, the attitude, and for her mental health, she wants to be around her friends and her family. For the past few years, Sophie has lived with Joe in New York City, LA, Miami, which clearly made her homesick. It took her some time, but she eventually convinced Joe that England would be their forever home and their final destination. But he quickly walked back on that promise once their marriage broke apart. In court documents, she admitted that she was blindsided by his decision to file for divorce. She said the breakdown of their marriage happened very suddenly after one argument that they had on August 15th. In fact, it was so unexpected that she said she learned about the split from the media at the same exact time as the rest of the world. And she since demanded that their two children be returned to England. Her complaint against Joe called for the immediate return of children wrongfully removed or wrongfully retained. She said that after they sold their Miami home, they were in the process of buying a home in the English countryside in April. But obviously those plans didn't work out. Career ambitions were a factor too. Apparently Sophie resented that Joe assumed she'd put work aside while he went on tour, especially since they discussed her returning to work after having their second kid. So she felt lied to when he expected her to join him on the road. The couple's divorce papers indicate that there is a prenup that Joe wants to be enforced. The terms reportedly ensure that he will keep his music royalties while Sophie will get to keep her acting residuals. So they'll only have to split the value of their marital home. This does make sense considering that Joe has an estimated net worth of $50 million, while Sophie's net worth is a lot closer to $10 million. But it's up to a judge to decide what's best for their two daughters. Although the girls are currently in Joe's care, he is asking for shared custody and a parenting plan that would allow for frequent and continuing contact with both parties. So hopefully the two of them will be able to move on from all of this while still being great co-parents. And last but not least, it's really happening between Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. They were spotted straight up holding hands in New York City over the weekend, and they confirmed their relationship with some PDA. The same night, they went to the SNL after party. Their appearance comes after they both showed up on SNL. Taylor surprised the audience to introduce Ice Spice, and Travis made a cameo during a sketch about the NFL literally having no chill when it comes to Taylor Swift. Swift. In fact, the backlash has gotten so bad that recently the NFL had to release a statement defending their coverage of Taylor. They said, we frequently change our bios and profile imagery based on what's happening in and around our games, as well as culturally. The Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey news has been a pop cultural movement, and we've leaned into it in real time, as it's an intersection of sport and entertainment, and we've seen an incredible amount of positivity around the sport. But clearly, the fact that they even needed to put out this statement in the first place shows you that they've received a lot of pushback. To be fair, Travis and Taylor seem pretty happy to let their relationship play out publicly, and they're not really hiding the fact that they're together. Though an insider said that they are still just getting to know each other and it's nothing too serious, fans think otherwise. While their romance has been making non-stop headlines, some celebrities have already criticized their relationship. Surprisingly, Olivia Wilde was one of them. On her Instagram story, she posted someone else's tweet that said, I wish Taylor Swift
Swift was in love with a climate scientist, and clearly not an NFL star. Judging from this post, it's pretty obvious that Olivia was alluding to reports of Taylor's significant carbon footprint. So last year she was named as one of the celebrities with the worst private jet CO2 emissions. Based on data from the Celebrity Jets X account, they found that her jet had made 170 trips between January and July of 2022, creating an estimated 8,000 metric tons of CO2. Her team then defended the numbers and they told Rolling Stone that her jet is loaned out regularly to other people. But even so, fans were not happy. One viral tweet said, Taylor Swift saying she wants to run away to the lakes and live out the rest of her life surrounded by nature and then being responsible for 8,000 tons of carbon emissions is so unserious. So it's interesting to see that not everyone has forgotten about this controversy. But for some reason, Olivia Wilde is using it to criticize her relationship with Travis. What do you guys think about this new story? Be sure to let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe to see more videos just like it.